just to switch that output stuff. Well, can uh, just turn off for a minute. Just make some checks in order. I think I'll go to them in a Right, welcome to the uh, 2019 annual general meeting. First of all, a number of things that I need to remind everybody about. We're filming this, we're videoing it. If anybody's uncomfortable with that, uh, we do that because we can then distribute it to the rest of the membership. We do that via our website once you're obviously Don't hope you're uncomfortable with that. Second thing, we've got um, an induction loop running around here for anybody who needs to take advantage of that. Um, if anybody that wants to move uh, a point or wants to uh, second a point, might move the membership number, so please would you pause to give that one like, to capture it because you've only got hands at certain speeds. And Rob, is there anything else I forgot? <laughs> Wait for the microphone. Oh, finally, if you do want to speak, we've got the microphone up here. I'll need to pass that to you. There's, there's two it. more at the back here. There's more at the back there, so don't start talking until we've got your mic, otherwise we won't be able to hear it. We'll it we'll be able to talk. Right. Um, technology works. And it does. Um, apologies for absence, we've got one or two. Uh, I think Mike, you've received one in writing from a... Richard Hay. Richard Hay, and I've received one verbally from a member I know, Gordon Gill, who's not been at the AGM. I think that's the limit of them. Uh, so the items we're going to... Yeah, the items we're going to cover are per, really, the last AGM and the one before that. Um, there are three other items that I'm going to talk about which I think will be new to um, this audience and of interest to this audience, um, but I still think we should be able to get through this by three o'clock. I know that some of us want to go and see a certain work going on, um, not one after that, so I'm sure that nobody wants to miss that. Right, first of all, the top table, um, if I could ask everybody, uh, probably because I've got the mic, if you can sit down and just introduce yourselves. Good afternoon, I'm Colin not, not, not close, not close enough. Not close enough. I'm Colin Sider, Treasurer. And Alan Finch, I'm Director of that Portfolio. Caroline Lee, Trade Coordinator. I'm Robert Lee, Company Secretary, and further apologies for um, Richard Huss, our IT officer, who's uh, out there with uh, the Motti. Brian Donnelly, and no with that portfolio. Chris Strockman taking over from Mark Benny as technical director. Uh, Gareth Jones, I'm editor of uh, 16 Meter today. Uh, Mark Benny uh, standing down as technical director. Thanks, Dave Gordon, I'm the incoming person editor. And I'm Sue Bradley, Alboy Bulletin editor. <laughs> Thanks, right, uh, so as I've done in the past, some highlights from uh, the most recent year. Uh, the membership was all static. Um, we ended the year 13 members lower than 2017, which on a membership of significantly over 4,000 is really neither here nor there. Um, one of the things I think I wrote about in my membership column in uh, February bulletin was we actually saw a churn in membership of about 500 in the year, of which two thirds were new people coming into the organisation and about a third were people returning to the organisation who lapsed uh, a year ago, two years ago, ten years ago for whatever reason. Um, we had another successful National Garden Railway show, and I believe this one's shaping up to be a successful one as well. Uh, very similar footfall to previous years, um, very similar financial outcome to similar years there or thereabouts. Uh, we issued our first data protection policy, um, and I think we were the first of the Garden Railway Associations to do this. Um, there haven't been any issues raised with it since it was released. There are a couple of slight changes planned to it. 
Um, but as far as we're concerned now, it's um, business as usual and it's doing its job. Um, we saw a further increase in the use of direct debit for subscription renewal. Um, this is the most cost effective way that we can renew our membership of the association. And as many of you have seen, we're passing on to members the saving that we make by doing that. We make a saving because we don't have to pay a credit card company a fee uh, and um, we think that the right place to give that benefit is back to the people who use it. When I last measured the data, which was basically last night, 49% of the renewals this year have been by direct debit. I've done a number of renewals today electronically all of those have been by direct debit as well. So I think that we're well on our way to seeing 50% of the membership renewing that one. Um, we published the revised small boiler and liquid propane gas uh, tank uh, test codes. Uh, Keith Bucklitch is in the audience. Thanks again to him for the work he did. Um, Fred Roberts isn't, but that's his, uh, uh, the person in Gimra who's taken over from uh, Keith Rowe in Gimra. Um, I don't think we could have got it over the line had we not worked together. And um, yes, there have been a number of questions arising from it. Um, I'm about to put some um, uh, responses to some of those questions on the website on Mark's or Chris's behalf. Um, but broadly speaking, we're satisfied with the way that that's, that's gone. And we had a small increase in subscription fees last year. I, I don't promise that we won't have one this year, but as you'll see from one of the things I'm going to talk about, we're looking for ways that we can reduce the cost of running the association and providing us all with our magazines. If that yields enough, then perhaps we can avoid a subscription increase this year. But I stress, we can't guarantee it, but that's our objective if we can. So this and the next slide were provided to you with the annual report. There's a straight lift of what's on the annual report. Um, if there are any questions about it, I'll take them now, or Colin will take them now. But I, I think what you see is, basically, we um, grew a little bit in terms of uh, the retained earnings carried forward, and in terms of the um, income and the cost of sales, we were not dissimilar to previous years. So we really believe that the association is running on a, a firm footing from a financial perspective. Uh, I want to elaborate a little bit of that on the next slide after this one. This again was in the um, annual report. Um, again, if there are any specific questions about this, then uh, Colin or I will cover them. If the meeting is interested in what's in de debtors and what's in um, creditors, then we can share that with you. But it's the same basic things as last year. Um, income that we've received in one year that pertains to another and cost that we've incurred in one year that pertains to another. But I've got details on that if needed. So in terms of um, some highlights or comments on the account, um, Turnover's flat, as you saw, 125, 125. There was an increase in the cash surplus. The administrative expense went down significantly. Um, we've got quite smart, I think, about using cost-effective venues for our meetings. We, we do a lot now by phone. We'll be having uh, our next board meeting on the phone next week to talk about the learning points from this show. Um, I'm not really sure that it can get any lower, but we're, we're all the time trying to control that as fully as we can. Um, we've therefore reported a small surplus for 2018, but we didn't produce a special issue of anything. We were planning to send out um, a new 16mm, or guide to 16mm scale modelling. That's been held up. That is now quite close to completion, all the text has been laid out. Gareth's next job, which is still significant, is to select and put in all of the pictures. And <coughs> as that happens, the guide will increase in size. We're expecting that it's going to be significantly bigger than the handbook that it replaces. Uh, as a result, it's probably going to be perfect bound like the Festinio guide was and like the 100th. Um, 
with the, was it the 150 um, uh, anniversary issue of SMT was perfect bound. So it will be a, I think it will be a, a, um, a good publication, and I hope that even those who've been members for a long time will get something from it. <coughs> we do expect to publish it later this year. I think May, June, July. We therefore expect that we will be reporting a small loss at this time next year because the cost of um, printing the guide and the cost of posting the guide um, will be something that will be in this year's account that wasn't in last year's account. So uh, if I'm standing here in, in a year's time, I, I suspect we're going to be talking about the small loss. And remember, the reason we do that is to feed some value back to all members. Um, I'll also talk about that thing again in a minute. So, are there any specific questions about the accounts, the performance of the national show, what are, debit, what are debtors and what are creditors? If there aren't, then I will move on to that the profit and loss account for the year ending 31st of December 2018 and the balance sheet as of that date be uh, accepted. I need a proposer and a seconder for that, please. So the proposer's mic. Three point five two. Thank you, Mike. And to second it, please. I can't see for that. Who was that putting a hand up? Did somebody? Keith Buckwich. <coughs> Seven oh nine one. Okay. Can I have a show of hands in favour, please? Any against? Okay, much. Right, then, thank you for that. The next item, then, is the election of directors. So, there are four this year. One, as a result of rotation, you know, um, we rotate for three years, or we, we rotate a portion of the directors every year, but we, each of us, effectively, is up for re-election every, every fourth year. And there are three new ones as well. Two. Two. There's only two. We haven't got uh, Chris. It's not on the agenda, though we can add it. We can add it, right, okay. <coughs> so the first is for Brian, that he'd be re-elected as a director. Again, I need a proposal and a seconder, please. Could you shout your... 4941. 4941. And Tab's seconding, I think. 1352. Thanks, Tab. Okay, in favour, please. Show of hands. Any against? Thank you very much. The next is that Mick Blowfield be elected as a director. Mick is show director, has taken over from Lawrence. You may recall that he took over at this time last year, but he was co-opted to the board, and so we need formally to elect him as a director this year. Notice also he must be out dealing with things as well, because he's... Right. No, no, me. Mixed out dealing with things, which doesn't surprise me, because I think we've got a little bit of it. Okay, so can I have a proposal and a second that Mick Blowfield be elected as director, please? Mike, again. And Brian's seconding it. Show of hands in favour, please. And any against? Right, the next is Dave Gordon. As you heard a few minutes ago, he's taken over from Suzanne as a uh, bulletin editor. Um, um, we co opted him to the board a little while ago, but now's the time to elect him as a director. So, again, I need a proposal and a second of proposal. Tag's proposing. And Suzanne is second. <laughs> Can I have a show of hands in favour, please? Uh, is, there, is anybody against Dave doing the bulletin? Seems not. Congratulations and thank you, Dave. Welcome to the And finally, my team is saying there's no reason why we wouldn't uh, elect Chris as a director at this stage. No? No? He's not in. Right, so Chris has uh, volunteered to take over Mark Rose, technical director. Um, 
Chris has also attended one of our meetings and we co-opted him at that time. Uh, as March stands down, and he's already proposing that, I think he's proposing, <laughs> he wants to say something. Mark? Uh, your new technical director will be running his double fare this yeah. afternoon <laughs> on Pentry. I'm just putting it out there. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. You just can't stop Mark. <laughs> Right, so, uh, could I have a proposal please that Chris Alan Finch proposes? Seconder? Anybody want to second? Yes, we've got a seconder from Keith here. Yeah, thank you, Keith. Any favour, please? Anybody against? Very good, welcome to the team. Thank you very much. Thank you. At least they didn't turn away from the board meeting screaming. Yeah. Chairman, can I, can I suggest we uh, ask the meeting to show their appreciation to the retirees in the usual manner? Here, here, here. Right. Alan. Would it be appropriate? Sorry. Do I need the mic? You, well, we can hear you. Right. You should have it really. Would it be appropriate for. Because most of us don't know Chris, I guess, for Chris to just give a very quick CV as to oh, credentials. Put it, put it Sorry, on the spot. All right, I'll work with you later. <laughs> That's the third time I've been dropped in this. <laughs> now, I've been a member of the 16 member association for quite some time. I'm also involved with the uh, Withington Group, and I'm chairman there. Uh, so I've been boiler testing with one of the boilers needed testing. Um, in my past life, I was in the education as a, a teacher in a secondary school, de teaching design technology. So I've been in the workshops and the science labs for the last <coughs> 40 odd years. Um, I've got a layout at home. I do silly things like build coal fire double fairies and uh, things like that. Uh, I just thoroughly enjoy the, the work that goes on the 16 Mile Association. And, I just like the size of the, uh, the, the models and everything else. You can get your hands around them rather than trying to get the magnifying glass out and put them on the track. So that's my past history. I uh, hope I can offer something to the association. Thank you. Okay. Three topics that might take a little bit longer. And by all means, stop and ask me questions if I'll call in my questions because I guess we're the people behind this at this stage. Right, there is a new service from Royal Mail called Subscription Mailing. Potentially, it could save us a fair bit of money in terms of mailing cost each quarter that we send out the magazines. If we use it, there are some things that we'll have to change. The first thing is that our addresses are supposed to be very accurate. Now we think that they are accurate, and I do a lot of work behind the scenes with Warners to keep them accurate. But you've all got a role to play in that as well, because everybody who's got access to the internet can view, maintain, and change their data online straight into Warner Systems. And you're the people that receive your magazines, and you're the people that see the address carrier sheets. So, if it's poorly formatted, incorrect, spelling mistakes, whatever, change it or let Warners know and they can change it. But address, accuracy of address data is important. There are certain standards that the Royal Mail apply. We've had a look at the data, or I've had a look at the data, and I'm pretty satisfied that we meet those standards. We will get charged by Royal Mail for, for deliveries that were out with the process, but we still think that the lower cost of the deliveries in the first place and the exceptions that we might be charged for will be lower than the cost of what we're doing today. Second thing, bigger change. We've got to start using generic address carrier sheets. The address carrier sheet is the bit that's got your name and address on it, and depending on the time of year, it's said National Garden Railway Show, your renewal stuff's on the back, your public liability insurance is on the back, and in August it didn't say anything, it just was your magazine. So, we think that there is one of the 
customised carrier ships that we produce at the moment that needs to persist. And we think that that's the February one that tells you about renewals. So those who renew by direct debit, what they saw on the back of their carrier sheet was dear tag, I'm not picking on tag because he does or he doesn't, I can't remember, but dear tag, you've taken out a direct debit sub subscription, you don't have to do anything else, we'll take the money off your account in due course. If you'd already renewed, and if you remember I opened up the renewal process as early as December, and some people wanted to renew that early, lots of reasons for it, if you'd already renewed, it said, you've already renewed, you don't have to do anything else. If you needed to renew, it gave you your renewal options, including, if you want to fill in a direct debit, thank you very much, here it is at the bottom of the form. We think that that is a value to members. If anybody disagrees with me, let me know, but we think that you'd, you, you would miss having that confirmation that you did need to renew, you did need to renew, and ideally how you renewed if you did renew. So unless we hear to the contrary, we're going to keep doing that, which means that that mailing will not be eligible for subscription mailing because it's a, it, it's a customised process. The other mailings of the year could be though, May, August and November. So in May, we provide you with a customised public liability insurance certificate. We've only done that relatively recently, I think for the past three or four years. There is no reason why you can't download one from the website, or we can still put it on the back, but you'll have to write your name and your membership number on it yourself. It doesn't make any difference to the legality of it. But if we don't have to do that, then it means that May mailing can use this new process. I stress we're not going to do it this time round because I don't think we're giving the membership enough notice. But we will do it, or we plan to do it, in May 2020, providing we've proved that this makes a worthwhile saving. So the final one, then, is the November mailing, which is the one which, I guess ever since I've been membership secretary, on the back it said, here's the data that we hold, here are your publication preferences, if you want to change anything, here's your time to do it. You used to send them to me, now you send them to Warner, so you go online and do it yourself. If we can see we've saved money by mailing in May, uh, sorry, in, in um, August using this process, and we've mailed the guide to 16mm scale modelling using this process, and it did save us money, then we'll do the same for November and we think we're giving the membership enough notice of this change for it to be reasonable to make it. That means that if you want to know what data we hold, your name, address, email address, phone number, your publication preferences, you'll either have to go online to look at it or you'll have to contact Warners and Warners will provide that information to you. They can give it to you over the phone or if you ask them to send it to you in printed form, I think they, they're obliged to do that as well. But I, that to me is the biggest of the changes that we're proposing to make. Does the meeting feel that not receiving that in November every year is a material um, devaluation of the membership proposition or is the potential saving worth getting at that information a different way if necessary? We don't know what the potential savings are, well, as such, in, in figures. We, we I think, don't think it's, it's particularly we, necessary to know specifics, but because you obviously believe it's significant. Well, Colin, we, we think we're looking at more than a thousand pounds a mailing here. Though. Um, you're looking at a saving. Well, over the year, mm. it would probably be about a thousand pounds. So two fifty a mailing. Well, no, for the four mailings, <coughs> or for the, well, the three mailings that we're sending by, sorry, the three mailings that we're sending by subscription mail will probably save somewhere around a thousand pounds, but we can't be a hundred percent certain because we don't know how the addresses will pan out and also uh, what charges will be levied by the post, for, by the Royal Mail for 
if we make mistakes, but we estimate that it will probably be around about a thousand pounds, which is quite some saving. Um, technically, I mean, if we had to put your subscription rates up by a pound, uh, that's that's equivalent to that. So we're trying to put off putting your subscription rates up as much as possible. And the ability is there. Thank you, Colin. The ability is there to actually choose per mailing which route we take. Correct. Right. Yeah. Correct. I'm happy with that. So we'll we'll try it and see what we say, and then we'll make a decision. We, we will we will still be compliant with GDPR if we don't send what we sent on the back of the carrier sheet in November, because there's no obligation to do that. There's just an obligation to provide you with that information if you ask for it. Okay, we're going to do it then. Next one, Digital SMT. Um, we have, from issue 124 onwards, full digital copies of SMT. Full digital means high resolution, searchable, um, and uh, Meaning you can uh, um, enjoy everything you enjoy in SMT today, but you're just going to look at it on the screen. You've probably got one thing that you can't do with a paper SMT, is that you can actually search for something. And because the uh, table of contents is hyperlinked, you can click on an article, and Gareth, correct me if I'm wrong, but you can click on an article and jump straight to that article. We have commercially, and by the way, this um, searchable text is called OCR, Optical Character Recognition. We have uh, commercially OCR scanned copies of the colour issues of SMT from 81 to 123. They are not at the same level of resolution <coughs> as the, the full digital ones that we've got. They're OCR, they're searchable, <coughs> but they're table of contents is not hyperlinked. So in other words, you can't do what you can with a modern SMT and click on an article and jump straight to it. You would have to search for the name of that article. That nevertheless is a lot of colour issues of SMT. And so we plan to make them available to all members as an additional benefit this year. There's there's, I would say, no cost now to us in terms of using those digital copies, but how we distribute them potentially has a cost. We could do that using a DVD, or we could do that once we've um, completely proved the concept and once we've got the necessary infrastructure in place we could do that via a secure members area on our website. Now, we know we can do it, and the reason we can do it is because via Warners we've got a transactional interface which enables us, when somebody goes onto our website and puts in um, a couple of pieces of information that they are only to know, we can verify in real time whether they're a current member. We plan to supplement that with a little bit of additional smarts to uh, make it even more certain that the person that we're dealing with is, is a current member. But we might, we might be able to make that available to download to current members. So my question to the meeting is, do you guys think that that would be of value or should we be focusing on something else? Right that. Does anybody think, yeah? Just let, pass that into the microphone, please. If it turns out that it's technically viable, I would actually be happy to have just the digital version and not have the association go to the expense of sending me the, the magazine. Well, well, we thought that that might be a response, but I think what we do at this stage is we continue with paper and a, a backup as digital. 
A digital subscription is something for the future, but we recognise that some people might value that. Some people overseas might value that. It might increase our penetration in certain geographies if we had a digital copy. But we've still got some stuff to learn on this. I think what I want to convey to the meeting is we're thinking ahead and thinking in this manner. There are other people I know who want to retain so many issues of SMT and they'll be quite happy to rely on the older stuff coming from digital. So if I was to look at it personally, I, I would want to have the paper copy, but do I want to be storing them for years and years and years? Probably not, and Carol would say definitely not. <laughs> Thanks for that. Okay. It's just one other thing, is, yep. is, is I had a digital subscription with the, the American Garden Railways magazine, and that worked uh, brilliantly. And I, did, I didn't have to have the, the paper version. Yeah, well... So it did, that, that idea does work. It, it does work, and I think we, are, we will explore it further. But the first thing we'll do is we'll make what we've got available, and then we'll learn from that. Can I just ask one question yeah. on that? Let, just, let, Sorry, you're you're going to give the microphone. My other director, look, there you go. Hi. Um, yeah, recently there's been plans produced that have been fold out plans. Gareth has a cunning plan for that. Right, okay, yeah, because that, that, that's the only thing I can't work out of my head how you do that with a digital copy. Well, somebody's passing a microphone. Um, we could make the copies uh, available in PDF format, but obviously the member would have to print them out, out themselves. Um, so unless, um, but I guess also as well, they could be more more in interactive than, than than they are at the moment. Um, so you could have, in, in fact, you could have more more plans than can be currently. Um, fitted into SMT, so you could have much more, um, much much more detailed plans, uh, which which would be available by by clicking on the link on the page or something like that. They would take to a separate section of the website where you could then go and look at the plan. The availability of an A3 printer is the downside of that, isn't it? Really? Well, well, yes, but what you can do is you can put it on a stick and you can take it to your local print copy shop. It's going to cost you a few quid, but if you're building something, that's probably a really cost-effective way to get you a good quality copy of what it is you're building. All right, now... Yes? Stephen? Uh, yeah, just... Point of clarification, really. Uh, numbers one and two on the uh, on the list you have there. Um, are those all those issues? And it's a, the, the idea that all those issues will be available to members free of charge. Absolutely. From eighty one onwards. Eighty one. From yeah. eighty one onwards. Yeah. yeah. Right. And um, the, the what is yet to be decided then? Is it that? Um, um, how this will be done, whether it will be done on the disc or, or as a download? It's how, not whether. Right. Okay. Thank you. That's, that's but, all. Yeah. Now, now again, oh, another question from Keith. Um, <coughs> many people will be aware that I've done the index for SMT for well over 30 years now. And Accompanying that, I also scanned each issue and the first hundred issues were put onto a DVD, um, which I gave out to some of my friends locally, but they are still available on the DVD. I'm quite happy to make those available to Richard or whoever wants to pick up this job to utilise at least, that will give you zero or number one through to eighty. Uh, in scan format. The early ones are JPG files, the later ones are uh, PDFs, but actually the, the JP, JPEGs are easier to read because the OCR does tend to scramble things up occasionally. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and of course it is possible to link 
the index as a search engine through to the scanned issues. What it won't do is allow you to search for a particular word in the issues, but you would be able to look up the titles and subject areas. Yeah. So if, if, if somebody on the board wishes to stick, stick their hand up, I'll quite, quite happy to well, it, give them a copy of the DVD in the first instance, to work with. Work through me, but I'll be working with Richard, with Gareth, possibly with Dave, because what we've already found is there are tools that you can use to, to um, clean up um, issues. So let's take an example. Some of the ones we've scanned, well, we've had scanned, sorry, some of the pages are skewed. And that's because they're putting a hopper and fed into a machine. There's software that you can use to unskew them, if that's a verb. And there's also software you can use to clean them up. But if they're not OCR, you can't make them OCR. And you're right, the OCR process, it, it picks up sometimes part of a word, but not all of it. Yes, yes. And, or, or put new words in. <laughs> yeah, and it's not perfect. It's, it doesn't give as, to the eye, it doesn't give us as high a resolution as um, a, high di a high quality or high resolution individual page scan. But it makes it more useful. And we think that the trade-off, the more useful bid, is, is worth having. Well, certainly, so the, the DVD is available, but of course I also have the corresponding back issues as well. Yeah. So we could re-scan those if we needed to. Okay, well, let's work together. Now, once we've put all this in place, once we've put it all in place, we, we will... Uh, review the um, arrangements that we've got for providing dig other digital copies, sorry, colour, digital colour copies of SMT. So at the moment they're included in, or some of them are included in the uh, material that comes from Huddersfield Railway Modelers. We will review that, but we won't review it until we've got this in place. And I have to stress this is there's still quite a lot of work to do to get this in place. But I'm not hearing from the meeting that this is a bad thing. I'm hearing, you know, I've seen some nods that say, yeah, the way to go. Okay, that's what we'll do. Um, Adam, there's a question. Question from Mr. Gold. It's, it's, uh, it's not a question. Yeah. Um, it's just things that were thrown up with my experience of, of digital copies yeah. um, with Garden Road. And there are a few things. One. Uh, was that people that were no longer subscribers felt they purchased these and they were still entitled to them. And it's all a bit vague that, uh, uh, particularly with overseas subscribers who uh, uh, perhaps, as you said, wouldn't get uh, paper copies. And, and some is a bit of, it's a bit vague. Uh, they feel they're entitled to everything that they pay for, but being no longer a member, it was all wiped out. But the paper copies, of course, they would have if they got paper copies. The other major thing was uh, with Garden Row, when it was purchased by another uh, um, publisher, was that they used their own people and uh, I had a lot of complaints because the old copies were just no longer available, they just disappeared. So there might be a few complaints as time goes on. Yeah, I think we've got, we've got a lot to learn. There's nothing that can't be got round but there will be complaints um, and we just have to see what happens. Yeah. Uh, Somebody once told me in my working life that you know, if, if you don't end up with some people complaining about the decisions that you made, then you didn't make any decisions. <laughs> and the, the other thing is um, we, we think we've got to embrace this and find a way to make it work because it's the future. Um, okay, thanks for your input. Finally, membership list which kind of hooks back to what we've been talking about. So, um, 
Getting good quality digital video content onto the DVD each, each year is a challenge to, to get good quality content in the first place. And it's also a lot of work to edit it, to render it, uh, to re-render it, and to, to make the kind of DVD that you see or that you have seen in recent years. Uh, an increasing number of us, uh, I'm not in that position yet, but I know a lot who are, they don't have um, an electronic device that's got a DVD player. If they want to play a DVD, they've got to buy a separate one, a USB one typically. Um, so it's getting, it, we're moving to a time when as a distribution vehicle for membership lists, and remember we're a membership organisation in the first place, it's becoming a, a problematic way to distribute it. The second thing is the membership lists reflect a point in time and they reflect basically the past. So when we all get those lists in January, I cut them typically 10th day, 12th day in January. That's before everybody's going to renew for the coming year. And I said earlier on, we saw a 500 member churn in a four, four and a half thousand member organisation last year, and we might do this year. So the, the, the accuracy of that data is flawed. Um, so, we intend in the future, and this is after we've got our uh, members own the secure area up and running and, and concept proven. We intend that um, we provide these lists via that area for members to download. They'll be the same as today. They won't be printable, you won't be able to copy and paste them, you won't be able to edit them. You'll need a password to access them just like you do today and you'll probably get the password in the same way from a, an edition of SMT but you will be able to pull them from our secure website. Um, that therefore means I can refresh them more frequently. So there would be no need to send a membership list out in January. It would be probably more useful to send one out now when 90% of the members have already renewed the subscription because if you're having an open day or if you're trying to contact somebody, you want to know who's a member now, not who was a member last year. It will probably be possible to do it quarterly. Uh, and we think, therefore, that that will be a greater um, use to members, and particularly those who are leading local groups. Um, you'll still be able to withhold your visibility in these lists. So, again, to hit something head on, if you're an individual who is concerned about any of your contact information being on the internet, then you can just have it removed from the lists and all that will appear is your membership number and not even your name if you don't want that to appear. So again, no different to this year. Uh, and as I've said before, you can alter those preferences online and you can alter them by contacting warrants. But we think that this would be a better way to distribute this in the future. The other thing is, we wouldn't have to pay for the creation of the DVD annually. And we'd save some money by doing that. And by saving some money, we might again be able to avoid a subscription increase. So the two things that would go would be a DVD with all that video content, because let's face it, you can get it all off Vimeo, YouTube, the internet, wherever. And the second thing is, we would be in a position to provide more up-to-date lists on a more regular basis through the year. So again, any comments about that? Mr. Docker. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just pondering as we go. Presumably with SMT going digital, bulletin will as well. Bulletin could. Right, okay, because I'm just thinking the situation where you need to have a password in a previous issue and you need to be able to look at that before you can actually log in. So how do you log in? 
I know, yeah. One of these things that we need to find a way around. Yeah, all right, I'll just flag it. Yes. Okay. Thanks. There's another thing, to, is it because you said bulletin, one of the other complaints we get is, and I won't ask for a show of hands, but I know it happens, some of us get our SMT and bulletin on the Saturday that we publish, it gets picked up by Royal Mail from Warners at Bourne on the Friday, and some of, it get it, some of us get it on the Monday, and some of us even get it on the Tuesday. And some people say, well, by the time I got to Bulletin and tried to phone up and take advantage of that marvellous um, item for sale in member sales and wants, it had gone. What we could do is we could make Bulletin or that portion of Bulletin available at 9 o'clock in the morning on the Saturday. So everybody gets the same chance. So what I'm trying to convey here is there's lots of things we can do but there's lots of work we've got to do before we can do it. And I want to convey, uh, uh, um, hopefully, give you a feeling that we are thinking of the future and um, some of the things we're thinking about would have a cost reduction which would help us manage subscription costs. Two more gentlemen at the front here first and then there's a gentleman at the back. Thank you. Yeah. Just a quick question with regard to this point. Does the board have an idea of uh, the cost of the DVD at the moment? Yeah, we know exactly what it is. If Colin can answer that, how much did this year's DVD cost us? Uh, the cost of the DVD is about £1,400 to distribute to members, and that doesn't include the postage because that will be included with the magazine that we send it out with. So that's just the cost of the DVD alone. Can I add to that, Colin? What, what it doesn't show is the hidden costs. So, um, you know, three and a half grand's worth of computer I've got at home, uh, 100 hours of work on it, um, the time that other people have taken to post stuff in or to upload it or whatever. So, uh, it, it is a relatively expensive exercise for a benefit which as the chairman has said um, so many people you know I'm getting people saying oh well, I've got this on YouTube you can download it and put it onto the DVD well we don't want that we want fresh content that people haven't seen so that's why we're looking at it there's a gentleman there with another slide <coughs> I'd just like to uh, confirm that um, we'll still be able to have hard copies of the magazines so the there's, there's, no, there's no plan to phase those out, but we, we, we have to recognise that some of the members, particularly overseas, would really <coughs> value this. Yes, and obviously it's a, a youngsters like uh, everything electronic as well. Well, it's so not just that. And he's, there's a member here from South Africa today, and um, at one stage it was taking three months for him and his colleague, um, they're both in... Um, <coughs> It was taking three months for them to get their SMTs and bulletins. Okay, thank you. Madam, who's this? It's mine. Um, I, I, I'm a new member and I, I, I'm just going to, it perhaps is more of a point, and there's a kind of question in it, but in relation to distributing member details via a DVD. I'm not a GDPR expert, but I suspect that it may, to, to uh, distribute information via a DVD may now be in reach of GDPR, because I can't, if my name's on it, uh, well, contact details, I can't, after it's been published and distributed, uh, withdraw my consent, and one of the things I understand is that if I want to withdraw my consent, that should be possible, but if it's on a DVD, that's not possible. And of course, that DVD is in the public domain, it can be passed to anybody. Um, maybe it shouldn't be, but it could be. Uh, and I noticed you shook your head, so maybe you, you've looked into this, but that, that's my feeling, is that, that, that there, there are issues around GDPR that, that may, may exist. We're providing we tell you, what we're, as a data owner, what we're going to do, and we give you the option not to be part of that, then we are compliant. 
even though I might subsequently... If, want if, to if you change it. your mind in the future, you, you, you cannot make that retrospective. All you can do is make it active from that point. So, in my scenario where we publish membership lists in this manner three, three or four times a year, you can be excluded from the next one and all future ones. But I've got no obligation to go back and try to expunge your data from all the ones that have been... Because you gave your consent knowingly at that time. If you change your mind, which is effectively what you're doing, it's from that point forward. And when you join the association, one of the things that you have to actively um, say or click or indicate is that you do want your address, your email, your phone number, any combination of those to be on the membership list. And it's when, it, when the data is presented, the option is no, so you have to change it to yes, in which case you made an active and positive choice. So that's why it's, it's not retrospective, it just acts from that point forward. Can I, if you want to speak with The, the DVD is passworded, so it's, it's a, a secure way of accessing the data. We, what we, we think we're, we're, we're giving you all the information you need to make an informed choice. <coughs> okay. Three more things. First of all, the award of the Land Trophy, which you'll notice isn't here. And none of the people who are going to receive the Land Trophy this year are here either because they're all running the prize draw at the moment. The board's decided that the Land Trophy this year will be awarded to the team that's run the prize draw for so many years. The people you particularly know are Ian Shields and Bob Newton. You've seen Bob hobbling today with his new knees. Um, they do a sterling job um, and they have done for many, many years. Um, we think it's the right time to recognise that. So after <coughs> the AGM, providing that somebody's there and not watching a locomotive running around on um, the modular display, I'll be awarding the Land Trophy today. Um, I think it'd be good if the meeting could indicate its uh, support for that in the usual way. And we already did it, uh, Mike, uh, asked you to show your thanks to um, the retiring debt directors, to Suzanne and Mark. Um, we have a small gift for them, which I don't have in my back pocket, it's actually behind the membership stand. So guys, we've got, for both of them, we've got a voucher or a card that you can um, spend at a place of your choice. Uh, thanks again for your um, work over uh, many years. Uh, both of you have moved what you do forward from where it was when you started. So again, thank you very much. Okay, anything else from the floor? Mike? Only one. Only one. Just wait for a mic. I would just like to propose a vote of thanks uh, for the job that Mick Bloodfield has done. I think this show has gone really, really smoothly as a steward. I've been here since yesterday morning. It has. Um, it might be good luck, I don't know, but it has. It's worked very well so far today. It's talent, isn't it, Mick? It's talent. That's <laughs> <laughs> well, well done indeed. Turn up to the AGM on time because I get written down as 2:30. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other items from the floor? I can't believe it's because you all want to be somewhere else, is it? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you very much for participating. The AGM is closed. Um, look forward to seeing. All of you, or most of you, more of you next year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.